you know, watching Arkansas, uh, obviously six guys back from a team that went to NIT. And what impressed me about their team last year when Gafford chose not to play, they won a road game in the NIT. And a lot of these guys were big factors in that game. They've added Jimmy Witt, who was there before. And then he was at SMU, came back to Arkansas. has been a really good player for them. So obviously Joe and Mason are playing like two first team all SEC players. We're really good against us uh, last year and a lot of the people in the SEC. So uh, their team's playing good, guarding at a high level, uh, really sharing the ball. So, uh, you know, it'll be a really tough test tomorrow. They were minus 29, Yeah, you know, the two things that when you play them, what they're, what they're really good at is points off turnovers, you know, creating – uh, offense through defense. They lead the league in steals. They're one of the tops in the country, and they convert them to baskets. Um, and so, and you know, when uh, LSU is probably one of the best rebounding teams in college basketball, just kind of impose their will on them. LSU can do that on a lot of a lot of people. I mean, they just went and got it. And uh, you know, that was really the difference in the game. Uh, probably Arkansas maybe didn't get as many points off turnovers they would have liked. I think it was 15 to 10, only plus five. But you're right, Paris, that was a difference that LSU just went back and got 23 offensive rebounds that led to 26 points. Can you look at your team on film after a game like Texas A&M? When you, I'm sure you're watching for a lot of things. What do you think about kind of body language and that kind of thing? Yeah, we, we, we reverted back to uh, before I got the job. And uh, that's no reflection on anybody. It's just that's all we talked about last year. And so we are we're a team that that doesn't uh, play as hard as we would like. I said it before. You know, it it hurts me because all the teams that I've had in the last ten or twelve years have had toughness and physicalness and played with great body language. I love teams that play with an edge and play with passion. And so uh, when it goes a little bad for us right now, our leadership is not great. And uh, and so we've got, you know we've got a lot of areas that we've got to improve in. You had you had a lot of teams at Middle Tennessee that, at least in my opinion, really reflected your personality. Sure, we do not. This one does not right now. And no, we're in January. Are you surprised? That oh at yeah, this point? which is killing me. It is, and uh, you know we're doing toughness things in practice every single day, and uh, you know so uh, we're going to keep fighting it every single day. Because without toughness in this league, it's going to be really, really hard. And uh, we, we can show signs of it. Shot making affects our toughness. And uh, it does some teams. And so, like in that second half when, you know, we, we didn't shot make and Blake's one for nine and KJ's missing balls around the goal, Devontae's whatever, five for 18. And then we just didn't really guard the toughness. But, you know, shot making in a lot of games that you guys have seen has been been a big issue for us. You know, I mean, you think about it. you. I mean, A&M's improved now. They, they, you know, they won, they beat Oregon State at home, and they played Arkansas right to the wire about the last four or five minutes. And so their team's getting better. And, uh, and then the big kid is as good as – he's as good as defensive center in college basketball. So he changed it. But, you know, if you think you can go on the road, hold a team to 39% and 57 points, you think you have a great, great chance, especially if you hold them to 19 in the first half. And so just our inability to – to, to go make plays from other people besides Brian is something we've got to improve on also. Carmen, what like the trajectory with the Memphis game as close as it was, Penn State, what was this? And it just looks like, uh, as you mentioned, reverted. Is, was there something that triggered that? Or was it no, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think. I think, you know, the Penn State was a lightning in a bottle, you know, in 15 minutes, you know. Uh, and everybody goes through it, but, you know, obviously, you know, Blake's in it. Blake doesn't get to practice every single day. I don't know if he's as in good a rhythm as he can. His health is fine, but he doesn't. He's got to be off and different things. And then, uh, you know, obviously Luis's injury after a while with the toughness part of it is a big key. You know, Bryce, who we were really counting on, has missed the last two games with the growing and won't play tomorrow. Uh, so you know, but and you know, what's happened is that we have four returning guys, and for the most part. I love them all, but those four guys need to play at a higher level. And some of the other guy, young guys, I think are going to be good players, hadn't been impactful players in some of these high-level games. And so our, our statistics against Power Five is much different than it is against non-Power Five. And so that's just something, obviously, you know, <laughs> we've got all Power Five left that we've got to change. You've been struggling to make plays and make shots outside of Brian. Is that something you're still kind of searching for? Sure. Going through some of those off the board. I mean, I mean, Devontae's had 
I mean, Devontae's five for 18, you know, and he had missed a dead, he never missed a, missed a dead layup, you know, and uh, to go up one, you know, he'd missed some, some good shots. Uh, Blake Henson probably shot a couple of advised threes that maybe he should have shot faked and go by, but had some open looks. K.J. Buffin at the rim was intimidated by Nebo, you know. And uh, so, uh, Hadeem C. I probably missed two or three layups, had a dunk blocked, you know. So, uh, there, there's a lot of opportunities for our team. And uh, we just got to gotta go make plays. Those guys got to make plays and just got to make basketball plays. And that's what we've got to have them to do. Do you anticipate having Bryce back soon? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he'll be back Tuesday. Today's the first day that he's going to try to do anything, which I'm sure is not going to be much. And uh, and so I, I don't know. It may be another maybe another week before we kind of get him, you know, to where he feels comfortable playing on it right now. I think he can he can kind of run straight ahead, but when you get those growing injuries of really trying to cut and move, you know, and and so he may have a little more time left ahead of him. Do you have a timeline at all for release? He got a great report at the doctor. Uh, he's like two weeks ahead of schedule, but he's still, I mean, he's in a boot. You know, I, I think it's going to be a long shot for Luis to play. Could, could we play him at the, but I don't know if it's the right thing to do for Luis. I think the right thing to do for him is he red shirts. Just my gut feeling right now because, you know, he's, he hadn't done anything. He hadn't done anything. And, and Luis's advantages are physicalness, toughness, athleticism. And those things take a while, you know. So I think we'll probably be really, really careful with Luis. And uh, and uh, I, I would say if I had to bet right now that he'll redshirt this year. Is that different, Carmen? I thought I heard eight weeks for him at the beginning. Yeah. They, they said eight weeks. And, uh, you know, they, they, they thought maybe by the end of January, 1st of February. And, uh, and that, that, that could still be true. But, you know, do you bring a guy back for eight games, maybe, you know, whatever it is in the postseason, you know, and a guy could get – 30-something games the next year. I, it's just at some point, you know, what I think Luis would do anything we ask him to do. I think he's just that kind of cat, you know. But I just think probably uh, the, the the best thing for Luis is for him to to take his time, get it completely, completely healthy, no more setbacks, and and get on to next year.